If you are conducting a survey or creating a new database, then you must create your questionnaire. In this regard, you may consider using Excel. Hello everyone, welcome to Excel Demi, your day-to-day -day Excel and VBA tutorial helpline. This is Hadiul Basher and today I will demonstrate how to create a questionnaire in Excel. For this video, I will use Microsoft Excel 365. In the first example, I will show you the manual process of creating a questionnaire. And then, using that questionnaire, I will complete this dataset. This includes the name of the employee, followed by the ID and their working department, the status of their vacation, that means whether they need vacation or not. Here, Y represents yes and N stands for no. Using these headers, I will create a form and insert the responses using that form. To do so, first of all, I need to convert this range to a table. For that reason, select any cell of the headers. For example, you can select the cell B4. Then, to create the table, you can move to the Insert tab. From the Tables section, you can click on Table or press Ctrl plus T to create the table. As a result, you can see that the Create Table window has appeared. And in the Where is the data for your table field, you can see that all the headers are selected automatically. As these cells are headers, so I'll check the option My Table has headers. Finally, click on OK to create the table. As a result, the table is created. Now we are ready to create a form and collect the responses using this form. One thing I should mention here that I will place the form under a new tab. So to create the new tab, go to the ribbon and right click on any tab and choose the option Customize the ribbon. This opens the Excel options window. From the Customize ribbon section in the main tabs, you will find the available tabs. As I will create a new tab, so I will click on the option New tab. As a result, you can see that a new tab is created. Also, a new group is added under this new tab. Now, to distinguish the new tab, I will rename the tab. So, right click on the tab and choose the option Rename. This opens the Rename window. In the Display Name field, you can set any name according to your choice. In this case, I will set the name as Questionnaire. Then, click on OK. As a result, the new tab is renamed. After that, I will rename the new group also. So, right click on this new group and choose the option Rename. This opens the Rename window. You can choose a symbol for this group. However, this time I will only change the display name. So, set the display name as Questionnaire 1. Then click on OK. As a result, the new tab as well as the new group are renamed. Now, I will add a form in this group. For that reason, go to the Choose Commands From field, then click on this drop down icon and choose the option All Commands. Now, look for the option Form. You will find the option Form here. To add the form to the group, click on this form, then click on the Add button. As a result, form is added to this group. Finally, to see the form in the ribbon, click on OK. As a result, you can see that Questionnaire is added to this ribbon. And in this Questionnaire tab, from the Questionnaire 1 section, you will find the form command. You can click on this form command and this opens the form. If you look at the name of the form, the name is manually because the name is set after the name of the worksheet manually. So, in this form, you will find the name, ID, department and need vacation field to enter your data. Now, you can enter your data. So, go to the name field and type the name John. Press tab to go to the next field that is the ID field. Set the ID as 101. Press tab again. As the department, type the department sales as the vacation status as John needs vacation. So type Y and hit enter. As a result, you can see that the record is inserted to the worksheet. In this way, you can add new records to this table. So let me quickly insert some records using the form. Our data set is complete now. I have used the form to insert the data here. You can use the form to edit the records also. For example, if you look at the record of David, you will find a typo in the department. So, I need to set the department as sales. You can use the form to do so. For that reason, go back to the form. Now, you can use the arrows to navigate through the records. If you click on this upward arrow, you will find the record of David. So, as the department, correct the spelling. So, go to the department field and set is as sales. Finally, hit enter. 
As a result, you can see that the record of David is updated accordingly. In this way, you can use the form to add data as well as to edit the record. To know more details about this form, you can check our video on form. You will find the link in the description box or you can click the card at the top right corner. So that's it. In this way, you can create a form and then create the questionnaire manually. You can use the VVA code to create the questionnaire and get the responses from the users. For example, I have created a questionnaire regarding a meeting using the VVA code and this includes the questions and the predefined set of answers that are not sure, agree, disagree or maybe. The user can choose the response for each question and the selected option serial number will be displayed in the selected option number column. And to score the responses, I have used a scoring system that is the not sure option carries 0 point, agree carries 1 point, disagree carries 2 points and the option maybe carries 3 points. And you will find the associated score in column A and the total score will be calculated in the cell A1 and this score will be used to evaluate the meeting. In this example, I will show you the detailed process of creating this questionnaire from scratch. I will create the questionnaire in this worksheet. Now to write the VVA code, first of all, you need to enable the developer tab. To enable the developer tab, go to the ribbon and right click on any tab and choose the option customize the ribbon. This opens the Excel options window. From the customize ribbon section, go to main tabs and check the option developer. Now click on OK. As a result, the developer tab is enabled. Now to write the code, go to the code section and choose the option Visual Basic or press Alt plus F11 to open the code editor. This opens the Visual Basic editor. Now if you want to write a code that will work on all the worksheets of this workbook, then you need to write the code in a module. So to insert the module, go to the Insert tab, then choose the option Module. As a result, module 1 is created. You can write the code here. I have already copied the code from the article. You will find the link of the article in the description box. Now let me paste the code by pressing Ctrl plus V. This is the code to create the questionnaire. The code is quite long. Let me first execute the code, then I will explain the code to you. To execute the code, you can click on this play icon or press F5. This opens the questions input box. Here you can set the number of questions. The default value is set as 8. You should set the number of questions according to a case. In my case, I will set the number of questions as 5. Now click on OK to create the questionnaire. As a result, you can see that the structure of the questionnaire is created. Let me out of it the height of the row 1. Now you can see the headers clearly. Now I will explain the code to you. So open the code editor again. In the developer tab from the code section, click on Visual Basic and the code editor is open now. Let me resize the code editor so that you can get a clear view of the code. The name of the macro is Create Questionnaire. I have used option explicit here. So in the very beginning, I have declared all the variables that I will use in this code. One thing I should mention here that you may find the comments in the green font helpful to understand the purpose of each section. So in the first section of this code, I have declared all the variables that I will use in this code. After that, I have set that border style. You can set the style of the border according to your choice. Now, let me scroll down to view the rest of the code. Here, I have set the maximum number of option buttons for each question. You can see, in my case, I have set the value as 4. So, you will find 4 option buttons for option 1, option 2, option 3 and option 4 in this worksheet. One thing I should mention here that you will set the maximum number of option buttons according to your case. In the next portion of the code, I have inserted an input box to get the number of questions that I will use in this worksheet. And the name of the input box is questions and the default value for the number of questions is 8. If you remember, I have set the number of questions as 5. So, a serial number of 1 to 5 for all my 5 questions are created. You should set the number of questions in the input box according to a case. And here, the IMAX buttons variable holds the number of maximum number of option buttons and the X number of question variable holds the number of questions that I will create in this worksheet. Then, the name of the active worksheet is set in the IWKS variable. So, from now on, this variable will refer to the active worksheet. After that, which statement is used to perform different operations in the active worksheet? 
First of all, all the values in the range of columns A to H are cleared before creating the questionnaire. Then the location of the first option button is set. In my case, I have saved the option button in cell E2. So you will find the first option button in cell E2. Let me scroll down to view the rest of the code. The location of the first option button is stored in the X first option button cell variable. After that, with statement is used to set the headers as well as to format them. For this reason, offset method is used to navigate through the header cells. If you look here, here the arguments of the offset function is minus 1 and minus 3 and as E2 is the currently active cell, so this offset function will navigate to the cell that is one row above to the current active cell that is row 1 and three columns left to the currently active cell that is column B. As a result, cell B1 will be selected and the headers will be set starting from the cell B1. To set the headers, array function is used and in this way, headers helper column, selected option number, questions, option 1, option 2, option 3 and option 4 are created. You cannot see the option 4 here in this worksheet because it is covered by this code editor window. So when I will minimize this code editor window, you will find option 4 in the cell H1. Then if you look at the orientation, it is set as 90. That makes the headers to run in a upward direction. The alignment is set as center, not to mention you can set the orientation and the horizontal alignment according to choice. After that, a range of 5 rows and 1 column was set as the IRNG variable because there are 5 questions in this questionnaire. Now let me scroll down to view the rest of the code. The irng variable was used in a with statement along with the offset function to create the serial number of the questions and as e2 cell is the currently active cell and as the arguments of the offset function are 0 and minus 1. So this serial number will be created starting from the cell that is in the same row as the currently active cell E2 and one column left to the current column E that is the serial number will be created starting from the cell D2 and you will find the serial numbers from 1 to 5 here. After that, the helper column, that is column B, is filled with the helper values 1 by this statement. I will use the helper column to calculate the score. Next, this block of statements will calculate the scores whenever an option is selected and the score for the option will be calculated in the corresponding row in the A column. For example, the score for the selected option of the first question will be calculated in cell A2 and the score of an option is one less than the selected option number. That is, if you select option 1, then the score will be 0 and if you select option 2, the score will be 1 and the score for the other option will be calculated in this fashion. To calculate the scores, here I have used the R1C1 cell referencing notion. After that, when the user will be done selecting all the options for all the questions, the total score will be calculated summing the scores of cell A2 to A6 in the cell A1. For this reason, the sum function is used. And in this way, we can calculate the total score and can evaluate the meeting. After that, we will apply some formattings to these cells. So let me scroll down a little bit to show the code. Here you will find the code to apply the borders and to set the row height and the column width. You can set the values according to your choice. In this case, we have used the continuous line style for the borders. As a result, you can see the borders in a continuous fashion. After that, I have set the row height as 20 and the column width as 9. You can set the values according to your choice. Now let me move to the next portion of this code. These statements are used to delete any already existing group boxes and option buttons because I want to place only my necessary group boxes and option buttons in this worksheet. After that, you will find the code to create group boxes and option buttons. Let me scroll down a little bit to get the view of the code. Here, groupboxes.add method is used to create a group including all the four cells where the option buttons will be placed. After that, optionbuttons.add method is used to insert the option buttons for all the questions and the formatting of the group boxes as well as the option buttons are set with these statements. Now I will scroll down to further view the code. 
Here, the selected option number will be displayed in the selected option number column using this statement. So, whenever the user will select an option, the selected option number will be displayed in the selected option number column. In this way, you will get the selected option number as well as the total score calculated and use these values to evaluate your meeting. And this is the structure of the questionnaire. Now, you can minimize the code window. And as I have said earlier, you will find option 4 in cell H1. You can further customize this structure to create your questionnaire. For example, I will customize the row 1. So select the cells A1 to H1. Then move to the home tab. On the font section, I will make the font bold. So choose the option bold or press Ctrl plus B to make the font bold. As a result, the formatting is applied to the cells. Then, I will apply borders around the cells. So, from the font section, click on this drop down icon and you can set the border according to your choice. In my case, from the options, I will choose the option All Borders. As a result, borders are applied to the cells. Then, I will change the fill color of cells B1 to H1. So, select the cells B1 to H1. Then, move to the font tab and click on this drop down icon of the fill color. Here you will find different available colors to set as the fill color of your selected range of cells. You can choose any color according to your choice. In my case, I will choose this shade of green. As a result, the fill color is applied. Next, I will set the questionnaire as I will create a questionnaire about the meeting. So, I will set the questions about the meeting. So, go to cell T2, type the first question about the objective. The objective was clear. Then set the next question about the workload. Workload was manageable. After that set the question about the meeting room. Meeting room was satisfactory. After that ask about the lunch facilities. Finally ask about the communication. I have done setting my questions. Let me adjust the column width. Now that all the questions are set, I will set the options. To set the first option, go to cell E1, type not here. Then set the second option, agree. Then go to the third option and set is as disagree. Finally set the fourth option, maybe. And hit enter. As a result, all the options are set. Now, you can choose the options as your answer to the questions. Now, let's check if everything is working properly. As the response to the first question, select the option Agree. Here, Agree is the second option and from the selected option number section, you can see option 2 is selected and the score for Agree is 1 and the associated total score is 1 as well. Now, let's set the option for the second question about workload. So, choose the option Disagree. This is the third option. As a result, you can see that in the selected option number column, cell C3 is displaying 3. That is, the third option is selected and the score for the third option is 2 and the total score is 3. This means our questionnaire is working as expected. Now let me quickly choose the other options. As a result, you can see that as I have done answering all the questions, the associated score is calculated and the total score is calculated as well. So our questionnaire is working perfectly. Next, you can hide the helper column and the selected option number column if you wish. For that reason, select the column B, press Ctrl and select the column C, right click on column C and choose the option Hide. As a result, the columns are hidden now. In this way, you can use VVA to create your questionnaire and collect responses. I have demonstrated the step-by-step -step guide for creating a questionnaire in Excel. Hopefully, you can apply this knowledge according to your requirements and convenience. You can download the practice workbook from the video description to sharpen your Excel skills. Feel free to leave any questions, suggestions, or feedback in the comment section below. You can go to exceldemy.com to read our Excel blogs, or you can share your Excel-related issues in our Excel Demi forum and receive free solutions. For more content like this, make sure to subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching our video. Bye!